Hello friends, today's topic is transient and frequency response of a R of an RLC series circuit. So what we have is an R is an RLC series circuit R L and C in series and we have some source of excitation here and we want to look at say the voltage between these two points that is across the capacitor how the voltage waveform looks like so we have an oscilloscope it can be a cathode ray oscilloscope CRO or a digital storage oscilloscope so we will give some supply waveform here and we want to see how the voltage waveform looks like for example we can uh, give a step voltage at this point like this so the voltage is initially zero so this is the zero voltage line so the initially the voltage is zero and suddenly at some instant at some point of time the voltage rises to a definite positive value and then it stays constant so it's like a step function so we can give this step input step excitation across these two points and we want to see how the voltage waveform looks like across the uh, this capacitor okay and you can uh, readily guess that when this voltage was zero if the capacitor was uh, not already charged so the capacitor uh, is not already charged and therefore initially the voltage across the capacitor will be zero so if I call this as t equal to 0 when the voltage uh, rises from 0 to a positive value then up to t equal to 0 if this is t equal to 0 here then up to this point the voltage across the capacitor will definitely be 0 and then it will rise it will start to rise okay and it will and you can again you can uh, intuitively uh, guess that finally the voltage across the capacitor will be a constant voltage because here we have a DC voltage so after sufficient amount of time after long enough amount of time the capacitor will be charged with the voltage equal to this voltage if I call this voltage as V then after sufficient amount of time voltage across the capacitor will be V and at that point no current will be flown through the circuit because I, we have a voltage V here acting here and the same uh, EMF or voltage across the capacitor so they will be equal and there will be no current through it so there will be no voltage drop across R and L and these two voltages will be equal to each other and they will satisfy KVL or Karsop's voltage law and it will reach this steady state finally but how will this voltage gr uh, grow from 0 to the steady value of V will it be a step function that means will it go instantaneously as it as in the input uh, it changes from 0 to V or will it grow gradually or uh, will it oscillate for some time and then uh, get stabilized at this voltage 
So that's what we want to see here. So there are so many possibilities, the possibility being that the voltage gradually going from G to V, the voltage uh, oscillating for some time and then stabilizing at the value of V. So this is V voltage axis and this is time axis. Okay. So how does this voltage waveform looks like across the capacitor is what we want to see. For example, uh, you may guess that if L inductance is very small, how small is small that we will uh, deal that question uh, soon. But if it is very small, if I just say it is very, very small, then you can expect that there is no inductance and this voltage, this supply voltage will charge the capacitor gradually like this and then there will be no oscillation etc but if the inductance value is high enough is considerable enough then what will happen as soon as the uh, capacitor voltage reaches the value of v the current cannot become zero instantaneously so the, because inductance is like an inertia for current so current cannot become zero instantaneously so current continues to flow and the voltage continues to grow and it becomes more than the supply voltage so this is a supply voltage it grows further and then it starts to discharge and therefore it oscillates and after sufficient amount of time it is stabilized to the value of V. So if A is very small then no oscillation. Okay, if uh, say also if the this uh, L is small plus if C is also small then you can uh, guess that the charging time will be very small and it can be almost like a step function if the capacitance uh, C is very small then you know so if C is also small L is also small then it's almost uh, the almost a step function okay so we will see how it behaves in with an oscilloscope by changing these parameters L, C, R, etc. And we will also derive how this waveform should look like theoretically. So we will derive a theory for the output waveform. and then compare experimentally experimental observation so that's the purpose of this experiment okay so let's do the theory first so here is the theory Uh, if I s say this current which flows in this direction is I which is a function of T okay so this current is I T to from left to right then the voltage across the resistance will always be R I T because R resistance times the current is the voltage that's the Ohm's law and the voltage across the inductance you know it is proportional to the inductance times the d i t d t if the current is increasing faster then the voltage that should develop across the inductance should be higher okay and then the capacitor voltage is an inti so this is okay let me uh, write this as vr 
this as Vl and this voltage as uh, Vc. So Vc is between these two points. Okay, so Vc, I don't have space to write the expression for Vc here, so let me write Vc equal to the total charge accumulated, uh, in the, depends on the total charge accumulated uh, in the capacitor. So if that charge is Q, then Q by C is the voltage across it and what is the total charge? So this is the integration of the current IT from time t equals minus infinity that is from the big bang when the universe started you can think of minus infinity to plus infinity all the or, or, or you can think I mean since when the circuit is made uh, this total charge divided by C now we assume that uh, at t equal to 0 the capacitor so that uh, was uncharged so that means at this instant when the voltage was applied before that the capacitor was uncharged or in, a say, uh, in other words no car, uh, current came to this capacitor before t equal to 0 so, so we can write it as 0 to infinity i t okay a dt is missing dt by c so that is the voltage across the uh, the capacitor right okay and then okay i should um, ah there is a mistake so if i am interested uh, to know the voltage at instant t not uh, at the uh, instant in uh, time equal to infinity not uh, but instead if I am interested to know the voltage across any time t then I should con integrate the charge from t equal to minus infinity to t up to that point right so and since there was no current before the time equal to 0 so this integration becomes 0 to t and uh, okay i can write this as qt because this is the charge accumulated up to time t total charge at instant t and this voltage is the voltage at time t okay so voltage across the capacitor is given by this expression which is 1 by c times the total ch uh, charge that came from time 0 to time t any time t now what I can do, I can uh, write this voltage, if I call it as Vs, supply voltage, Vs is equal to Vr, so it's sum of these three voltages which are in series, Vr plus Vl plus Vc, now Vr is equal to R times It plus Vl is equal to L d i t d t i am just copying this expression from here, here to here plus v c v c is equal to 1 by c 1 by c 0 to t integration of i t d t right now what i will do i will differentiate this equation okay. and Okay, so I should put a t here if v is, is function of time. Now, if I differentiate this, then I'll have d v s t d t. Okay, so that's the derivative of the supply voltage is equal to r this one plus d d t of i t plus this will be the second derivative now because I'm uh, differentiating once again this uh, this term so we'll have l d two i t d t two 
that's the second derivative with respect to current okay plus 1 by c now this will become it right so this was the total charge accumulated uh, from 0 to t so the rate of this total charge accumulation is nothing but the rate of charge accumulation or current at time t so this is i t okay so we have a then a second order differential equation so let me reorganize this term so d so first l d 2 i t by d t to the second derivative then i write r d i t by d t the first derivative and then finally 1 by c over i t so now i move on to a new page and uh, while doing so let me just rewrite the equation that we wrote in the last page v is t ddt of that is equal to l d i t d2 i t d t2 second derivative plus r d i d sorry d i t d t plus 1 by c over uh, 1 by c times i t okay now we see that we have applied a step input and the voltage increases at t equal to 0 from 0 to a value of v okay so this is how v is looks like therefore after t equal to 0 so if uh, so after t equal to 0 or for t greater than 0 okay so for t greater than 0 we have d dt of v is t is equal to 0 because the voltage is constant steady so its derivative should be 0 right so this observe this and therefore we can write this equal to 0 for t greater than 0 right now the output waveform so we have said that the output waveform can be like this can be like this can be like this or there are many possibilities so it can oscillate it can gradually creep to the final value of v equal to this step value and so various things can happen but similarly the current that flows in the circuit so this is what this is vc voltage across the capacitor right which we want to uh, see in an oscilloscope again the, if we if we uh, could measure if we had measured this current i then this current also have some pattern some waveform right so we can similarly have a current waveform it so this is vct and it so that will that and this is t equal to 0 this is t equal to 0 the current will can also have different patterns 
sorry, uh, uh, extremely sorry. This can't be like this because the current finally has to be zero. Make no that because when the steady state is reached, this capacitor will be charged with the same voltage as the supply voltage. So the current will stop at that point. So the current waveform cannot have a final value, final uh, positive value. So that waveform will be, can be like this, for example. or it can be non-oscillating like this so all these possibilities exist but whatever is this waveform that must satisfy this equation so whatever is the waveform that must satisfy this equation therefore we can solve this differential equation to have the idea about the shape of the output waveform but solving uh, or, or, but this differential equation alone is not enough to get the exact shape of uh, this waveform because we know that a second order differential equation if it is solved uh, we we need two boundary conditions to get the um, definite solution for that uh, differential equation. So the two boundary conditions or the two constraints can be in this case like i at t equal to 0 it should be 0 right why okay why always ask the question why this is a great question to ask in science okay so initially so we know that before this voltage was applied, the current was zero because it, it was the supply was not there, so there was no current. Now, if at, so, this, that was at t equal to zero or zero minus slightly before the this uh, supply was switched on. Now, if we consider the instant zero plus, let me write zero plus. So slightly after switching on this circuit, uh, this supply if the current has any finite value any positive value then then we will have so if i 0 plus is not equal to 0 then d i t d t this derivative at t equal to 0 will become infinity plus or minus depending on this kind is plus or minus okay so this voltage so the voltage across the inductance will be huge will be infinity and that will violate the kvl because we have to have a finite voltage across uh, added up uh, across all these three elements but if the voltage across the inductance is infinity then they cannot be uh, uh, finite after adding these three voltages but they have to be finite and equal to the supply voltage so the current at immediately after the switching on cannot be cannot be positive or negative or any finite value it has to be zero the current cannot increase sharply so here the, the sharp increment is not allowed by this inductor the increment of current should be gradual always okay let me erase this okay so we know that the current immediately af after the switching on or i zero is equal to zero again what else do we know we uh, we need another condition so this is one boundary condition this is one boundary condition okay. we need this condition to get a definite solution for this differential equation but we need another what can we say from this circuit you see so what we know is that um, 
the voltage across the capacitor initially was zero, right? Because the capacitor was uncharged. And initially at t equal to zero, the current is also zero. That's the first boundary condition. So if this current is zero at the very beginning, then the voltage across this resistance will also be zero. So that means this voltage is zero at t equal to zero. This voltage is zero at t equal to zero. The only voltage uh, which is non-zero, then that is only this inductor voltage, right? So this inductor voltage then should definitely be equal to this supply voltage immediately after uh, switching on. So that means we can say that at t equal to 0 plus immediately after switching on, the inductor voltage L d i t dt should be equal to the supply voltage at 0 plus. So from this, we'll have the value of uh, this di dt at t equal to 0 given by v by l, but v is this step value, right? So this is the second boundary condition. And this was the first boundary condition that the current initially should be zero because current cannot go fast, uh, faster than, I mean, uh, it cannot go fast because the inductor doesn't allow. Inductor offers some inertia to the current. So current is initially zero at equal to zero and the rate of current increment should be so that the LDIDT is equal to the supply voltage because these two voltages are zero initially. So these two are the boundary conditions and together with this differential equation, if we if we collect these three, one, two and three, two conditions and this differential equation, we can find how the shape of the current waveform look like. Right? And in this experiment, we have the oscilloscope placed across the this uh, capacitor. But assume if we had this uh, this measure uh, measuring device across this resistance, right? Then if we are measuring, if you are interested all about the voltage across this resistance, then that voltage is nothing but R times I T. So that waveform will be same as the waveform of IT multiplied by a constant R. So if we had this oscilloscope instead of here, if we had it here, then that waveform is given by the waveform of IT. But here we have the oscilloscope across capacitor. So the waveform across, the voltage waveform across this capacitor is not same as the waveform of the current but it will be different, we'll derive it. Uh, but if we were interested about the current, this is how we could have proceeded. But in this case, we are interested about the voltage across the capacitance. So let us, so we have taken a wrong route, you may say. Uh, let us write everything in terms of the capacitor voltage in instead of in terms of the current. So we have taken a wrong route uh, for the particular experiment uh, we are considering. So let's take, uh, let's uh, uh, change our route. Okay. Now, what, so we have to write everything in terms of VCT, the voltage across the capacitor. Okay. So what we will do, we'll first uh, see how Vc and this current IT are related. Okay. We know that Vct is equal to the integration of 0 to t 1 by c and we have IT dt. Right? That's what we have seen here. Vct is this. 
right? So we can write this implies that d d t of v c t is equal to one by c i t, or this implies i t is equal to c times d d t of v c t. Right now, what we will do? We will put this expression for i t in this equation. So this differential equation, which we wrote earlier, was in terms of i t, but we are interested about v c t capacitive voltage. So we will put, we will write i t in this expression in terms of v c t. So let's do that. Okay. Uh, let me first copy it. Here, so we had L D uh, okay, uh, I think that's not going to be very convenient because if we do that, so the first term is here is uh, it is second derivative of the current. Okay, so if this is the second derivative of current, and current itself is the first derivative of voltage so the first term will become third derivative of vct so we'll have this l d i d2 i t d t this is the first term so this will become l c times d3 i sorry vct by d t3 so this will become third derivative and we will unnecessarily have a third order differential equation. It is uh, so again, this is not a convenient route to take. Let's stop. We will so okay. One idea when I am doing this derivation. Uh, I want to convey you something uh, that the derivations can be thought of by yourselves. Okay, you try it, make mistake, f find something difficult, accordingly modify. It. It's nothing to be memorized. It's nothing that. Uh, some sacrosanct lines of mathematics written in book and we have to memorize and throw it out in our exam scripts. It's not like that. We, everything we can uh, think of. Okay, so this is again not a convenient route. Let's uh, look at the circuit and write the, uh, write an equation, a differential equation in terms of VCT. Uh, let us start from this equation. Vs, so Vs supply voltage is equal to Vr plus Vl plus Vc, right? And now I will write this as equal to Vr is equal to R times It. Now It is this, right? So R times, okay, so this is R times, let me write it first, R times IT plus VL is L D I T D T plus V C T, okay, and then, so I'm, uh, so it is already in, v, uh, in terms of V C T, so this term, so I'm happy, these two terms I have to write in terms of V C T. Let me write this as R in place of I. I write C D D D T of V C T. Okay. Plus here I write L, and then in place of D D T of I T I write using this so C this constant plus so we have one derivative here and i itself is another derivative of vct so this will become second derivative d d d2 d t 
two sorry of uh, v c t plus this third term which is already in terms of v c t. Okay, so what we have here, let me reorganize from the second derivative to the zeroth derivative. So I have n c second derivative d v c t t d t two plus r c d d t of v c t right plus v c t and this is equal to v s t now for t greater than 0 ok this is equal to a constant v so v is equal to this term enter term l c let me use a shorthand v c double prime t for second derivative plus r c v c first prime for first derivative and v c okay. now in this case this is equal to a constant and not equal to zero unlike the current uh, differential equation where we had the so here we had the derivative of voltage so it was zero but in this case it is not equal to zero so this is the differential equation for the output voltage or capacitor voltage so this is a non homogeneous differential equation by homogeneous differential equation you mean that this thing is being equal to zero when this is not zero it is uh, not it, it is non homogeneous and it's slightly trickier to solve this differential equation than if if it were a homogeneous equation and this other side if it were zero but we can solve it if we want to find out vct uh, this waveform of vc we have to solve it there is another alternative if you are not comfortable with this non homogeneous differential equation how to solve it then there is an alternative and that alternative is here solve this current equation current differential equation this is something equal to zero so this is a homogeneous differential equation and we have already discussed what are the boundary conditions so using these two boundary conditions and this differential equation you can get how i t should look like so you can find out i t with these boundary conditions and this differential equation and once you find i t how the waveform of i t should look like then you may look at this equation that vct is nothing but the integration of it so once you find it then you can integrate that equation or expression of it over time t to get vct so so this was this wrong route that we have taken earlier is not a waste if you are not comfortable with this non homogeneous differential equation an alternative solution is that solve for the current and then integrate the current to get the voltage. So this is also useful, this is not a waste. So one problem we can solve in many different ways. So once again let me stress the fact that the derivations are not to be memorized, derivations are to be practiced and thought over and you can do it in many different ways, whichever is convenient for you. Okay. Now let us uh, solve this non-homogeneous differential equation. Okay. Now here is the trick how to solve. So this is the so uh, hold on please. So a trick on non-homogeneous. differential equations like the one we have uh, in the previous page what we will do okay let me first write it down once again so the equation is lc 
three C double prime. I'm not writing the argument T again for simplicity of writing. Then R C V C T R C V C prime T plus V C T. This is equal to V. Now what we'll do? We'll define a new variable. So define a new variable. Uh, let me use u. u is equal to v c minus v. What does this variable physically signify? So this is the capacitor voltage v c, and this v. We know that this is going to be the steady state voltage across the capacitor. The final voltage. we know across the capacitor is going to be this stiff value after infinitely long enough time after the switching on so this this is physically is the difference between the instantaneous capacitor's voltage and the final uh, voltage across the capacitor that is what we are going to define as u now if this is u then this implies that the derivative of u first derivative this is short hand will be equal to the derivative of vc minus this is a constant so minus 0 and again second derivative this will be equal to vc double prime right because again this is constant zero so now this implies that let me write everything in terms of u so v double prime vc double prime is equal to u double prime so i can write lc u double prime plus rc v prime in place of rc v prime i write v prime sorry i mean vc prime vc prime is u prime so i can write u prime plus in place of vc i can write u plus v u plus v and this is equal to v now you see that this two cancels that means on this side we have zero so in terms of u this is a second order differential equation which is homogeneous because the right hand side is zero right so with this trick of this new variable the substitution of variable we have made this non homogeneous differential equation into a homogeneous differential equation and and we know from our high school knowledge how to solve this differential uh, second order differential equation which is homogeneous so that's what we are going to do next so we are going to assume a solution this is the trick which we learned in our high school we are going to assume a solution that ut is of the form e to the power Say some. Uh, what should I write? Alpha t. Okay, and uh, some constant. E e to the power alpha t. Okay, so this is a guess solution. Let's see if this is the solution. Then what we can say? Then we can say that u prime t is equal to e. alpha e to the power alpha t and u double prime t is equal to a alpha square e to the power alpha t right now let's put this two derivatives u prime and u double prime here in this equation so then we we'll have if i put this to here i'll have lc u double prime u double prime is equal to a alpha square so a alpha square e to the power alpha t plus rc this is rc then the first derivative is a alpha so a alpha e to the power alpha t plus u itself is a e to the power alpha t this equal to zero now this implies so i can take a 
to be non-zero because uh, okay a, a is common in all these terms a a a now if a is zero then ut is zero so if uh, so the the swift form of ut is always zero and that satisfies this equation definitely that satisfies this equation but this is a very trivial uh, uh, solution okay we'll consider we'll keep that in mind that, that that is also a solution but are there any other solutions uh, where a is not equal to zero so let's see if there are other solutions with a not equal to zero so we take a out and then we have uh, this term lc alpha square let's take this e, e, e to the power alpha t also as common then we have lc alpha square plus rc alpha plus uh, here we have 1 whole multiplied by e to the power alpha t this equal to 0 now e to the power alpha t cannot be equal to 0 for all t equal, for all t right so this is not equal to 0 so that means if we want this differential equation to be satisfied, this term should be equal to 0. That's the only option left. So we have LC alpha square RC alpha plus 1, this equal to 0. Okay. So if the output of the form obeys this uh, form, exponential form, then alpha should satisfy this equation. Another option is that uh, this ut equal to 0 or a equal to 0, so ut equal to 0 throughout. That is also a solution. It is a trivial, very easy solution. We will keep that in mind, but we are looking for if there are other solutions, non-trivial solutions. And yes, there are, but for that, alpha cannot take any value. Alpha have, uh, has to take some value which satisfies this uh, quadratic equation, right? So that means alpha must be of the form okay so this is the uh, root, uh, equation for the roots of a differential equation so we have minus of this term b so rc minus b plus or minus root over b square r square c square is b square minus 4 ac so minus 4 a is lc and this third term, okay, so which is times 1 divided by 2a. I'm by a, I mean, okay, if, uh, so I'm considering this as a, this term as this coefficient as b, and this coefficient as c, okay. So we then the solution should be minus b plus minus root over b squared minus 4ac by 2a. Now 2a is lc, 2lc. Right? So the alpha must have this form. Let me try to simplify it slightly. Let me take this C uh, common. So let me try to write it as minus RC plus minus C times root over R square. Okay. So this C is taken out minus. 4L by C, right? And then whole divided by we have 2LC here. Okay. Now this C and this C cancels with this C. So this alpha then becomes, let me write it here. So alpha is equal to minus R minus R then plus minus root over R square minus 4L by C whole divided by 12. Uh, now let's try to simplify it a little further although it's not uh, necessary uh, say we want to uh, get rid of this denominator 2L, then we can take out 
is four and uh, L square. So we can write it like, uh, so let's divide the numerator by 2L. So this will be R by 2L plus or minus. So we are dividing by 2L. So here we'll inside uh, we'll have 4L divided by 4L square. So we'll have R by R by 2L whole square, right? Minus. So four will cancel and I L will cancel. We'll have one by L C, and then divide the denominator by two L. The same thing. So this is one. So you can also write it like this. Okay. So R by two L plus minus root over R square by two L square and one by root over L C. Now, depending on the value of R, L, and C, the alpha will have different values, and the waveform, which is a to the power alpha t, that will also change its shape. So that's what we will now see that how the values of R, L, and C changes the shape of this waveform u t. Now, what is u t? U t is v c minus v. We are interested about v c. V c is what the capacitor voltage. Okay, so we look. We want to find out the voltage across the capacitor, which is V C. But we have done a change of variable to get a non-homogeneous differential equation uh, in homogeneous form. So we are writing it in terms of U. U is nothing but V C minus V capacitor voltage with some offset, with some constant offset, and this U takes the form of e to the power alpha t where alpha depends on the circuit parameters r l and c so we will now see how r l and c their value changes the shape of ut that's what we are going to look at next so we see that alpha can have two values which is like minus r by 2l minus r by 2L plus root over R by 2L whole square minus 1 by LC. This is one possibility, and the other possibility is minus R by 2L minus this uh, the same thing here 2L whole square minus 1 by LC. Okay. Now uh, let me use some shorthand, uh, something like click. Okay, let me write. Uh, what can I use? Say this term. I'll write it as sigma, and let me write this term as omega square so that means 1 by root over lc is omega uh, i mean why this why not 1 by lc equal to omega why 1 by root over lc equal to uh, omega uh, this is because actually that term 1 by root over lc has a uh, physical significance we'll see that okay but just for for now it's just a notation okay so alpha is equal to r by 2l and omega is equal to 1 by root over lc so this term has a physical meaning it it uh, it, uh, it is a special property of this circuit uh, we'll see what it is uh, so let's denote with the symbols for now and sort it so we have alpha is equal to either sigma plus root over sigma square square plus uh, not plus minus minus omega square or it can be sigma minus root over sigma uh, square minus omega square so these are the two possible solution for alpha 
and then ut is a times e to the power alpha t Ah, I, I, I missed a minus, so this is sigma, so I have minus here, so a minus should be here, okay? So, ut takes this form, and then alpha has two possibilities, say like alpha 1 and alpha 2, then alpha 1 also satisfies this differ the differential equation we wrote here, alpha 2 also satisfies the same equation. Therefore, actually, any combination of the form ut equal to a1, so if I call this as alpha 1 and this as alpha 2, e to the power alpha 1t plus a2, any other coefficient, e to the power alpha 2t that will also satisfy this differential equation. How to verify that? Just take this part, differentiate it, double differentiate it, put the values of u and u prime here, do the same thing for this, put the values of u and u prime, and you will see that this is equal to 0. So if you differentiate this once and twice and put it in the differential equation, you will see it is satisfied. So, ut takes the form like this. Now, so therefore, we can write this as uh, a1. Now, alpha 1t, what is it is? e to the power this minus sigma minus sigma t plus this term root over sigma square minus omega square t okay so this is alpha e to the power alpha 1 t plus e2 e to the power minus alpha 2 t which will be sigma t plus sigma square minus omega square t where sigma is the short form shorthand for r by 12 omega, omega is 1 by root over lc okay now what we can do we can take this this common e to the power minus sigma t as common it's here it's as well as here so let me write it as e to the power minus sigma t common and inside i have a1 e to the power this term okay sigma uh, which is root over sigma square minus omega square outside the root is t plus a2 e to the power uh, ah this should be minus so for alpha um, 2 we have minus here so this should be minus minus something e to the power omega sigma square minus omega square and outside the root we have t okay so i'm running out of space slightly here in this page so we have a common term and inside this we have two exponential terms. Now then now uh, there are different possibilities. Uh, the possibilities are that sigma square is uh, greater than omega square in which case this thing under the root will be positive and this quantity will be a real number. The possibility that sigma square equal to omega square in which case this will be 0 and the other possibility is sigma square less than omega square in which case this will be a imaginary number because under the root we have a negative number. So, depending on these different possibilities, the shape of this waveform will change and that's what we will look at next. <laughs>